So Stone, Painted Shield has released two albums, but the one thing you guys didn't do was actually play live. And sometimes the music sounds a lot different in the studio than it does on the stage. Talk to me a bit about what the experience was like of revisiting these songs in front of people. Uh, well, we uh, we just played three shows in Seattle, and um, we had a four-day rehearsal kind of window, so kind of walked in there first day, uh, started kind of bouncing through the numbers, and it was a little rough, like kind of, you know, it was kind of basically kind of there was moments where you were like, you know, feeling it and great, and then um, day two, we, uh, we kind of started hitting it, and uh, by day four, we were feeling more confident, feeling like, okay, we got this, and... Uh, we played three shows. Uh, first one, kind of, pretty much without a hitch. You know, there was some, you know, some mistakes, but uh, we felt good about it. Second show was kind of a stiff, like, self-conscious. And the third one, we just really, really kind of had a moment where the song started stretching out. We kind of got more dynamic with it. We were able to kind of hear each other better, and we just kind of sank into it. And we were, you know, at the end of that one, we were like, okay, we're a band. We yeah. could, you know, we could do this. This is something that, you know you could hear the songs kind of growing and sort of, you know, getting to that point where they're starting to adjust to the live situation and stretching out a little bit. And it's exciting, really fun. And, uh, you know, nine years in the making. So Mason and I started working on songs together about nine years ago. And, um, and then, you know, I introduced, you know, some demos that I had made with Matt Chamberlain and then Matt got involved and then Brittany got involved and then Jeff Fielder got involved. And so it, at each stage, we were kind of adding another element in and another personality and another collaborator. And um, it's been so much fun to build something so long and so slowly. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty exciting to kind of see it manifest live. And now we're going to, you know, eventually try to play some more shows. So that's that's exciting. Right on. So what can you tell me about Pain and Shield 3, the status of a third record? We have like maybe 10 or 15 kind of ideas that are different stages of like completion. So some might be kind of close to being done. Um, but after playing, I think that the idea is that we're going to get back together and try to record together as a band um, to finish this one off. And um, it's, you know... It, it's when you when you build something together with other artists, it's so fun to kind of watch the excitement kind of spread and and as people sort of realize that there's something to this that they really are attracted to and are really excited about instead of just like yeah I'll do this thing I don't know what it is yet but like where they really kind of own it and I think we're kind of getting that point now where everyone's starting to feel some you know some ownership over this thing and the more that happens the more I can kind of step back and kind of just like just try to keep it going as much as I can because you know. That's probably my skill set mostly is really just trying to be encouraging and just like be excited about what's possible in the room. And um, and particularly with these musicians who are insanely talented, you know, Mason's songwriting, his lyrics and his sort of his sensitivities and Matt Chamberlain, incredible drummer, Jeff Fielder's crazy good guitar player, bass player, singer and and Brittany Davis is a star who is, you know, ultimately will probably be the biggest thing about Painted Shield, you know, um, Brit's uh, charisma and their songwriting and um, beyond shredding ability in terms of the keyboard and their ear, it's it's unbelievable. So um, we're, we're slowly coming to grips with all this talent in this band and like what could happen and we're excited about it. Oh, cool. Yeah, now, there were guitar nerds on the internet who uh, spotted the fact that you were playing a Mike McCready signature guitar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, Mike McCready gave me one of those things, and I, you know, first of all, he gets these guitars made by, you know, he got one by, I got a 59 Les Paul from him, from the Gibson, like one of the, you know, few, and then he, and he came over and brought me one of these Strats, and it's exactly like his 1960, and, uh, which is perfect for me, because I'll drop a guitar, and I, I don't want a real 1960 guitar, it's, that's not, that's not good for me. Uh, but his plays great, and um, Strat kind of works in this band, so uh, uh, I was excited to play that. That's funny that, that that's out there. Right on. So on another note, Stone, um, giving back to the Seattle community has been a huge part of not only your own philanthropy, but Pearl Jams as well. And I know that you have something cool coming up with a free health clinic in Seattle. Can you talk to us a little bit about why that remains a priority for you? to do what you can to help people in the city that has been 
so wonderful and nurturing to Pearl Jam and you as a person and musician? I mean, I think the main thing is just um, that at Pearl Jam as a band, when we first started out, it just kind of was built into kind of the way we were doing things. And we always thought that um, ultimately um, participating on some level in democracy and on some level as activists was important. And we've done some, you know, we've done, we've had some impact and I think we've done some. Um, we could always do more. And for me personally, I don't volunteer nearly enough. I don't do nearly enough for, for other folks. So um, I'm, I've got, you know, a family, four kids. It's so easy to just fall into like, I gotta freaking figure out, I gotta figure out dinner tonight and I gotta drive kids to school and I haven't played my guitar in a week. And like, you know, you get into your own headspace, but clearly there's so much to do and there's so many opportunities to grow in that regard. So um, I, I'm trying to do more and one of the things that I am doing is this uh, King Seattle King County um, free clinic that happens. It's been happening uh, once a year for three or four days for quite a while and there's been a stop because of COVID, but um, it happens at the Seattle Center. And basically it's uh, a bunch of hospitals, a bunch of doctors and a bunch of volunteers all coming together. And for three days, anybody that needs glasses, anybody that needs dental work, anybody that needs all these like kind of things that you could never pay for when you, when you don't have the money or, or it's um, these things become available and it's, it's, it's a big deal. So um, I'm gonna be volunteering for two days down there. I think it's April 27th, 28th, something like that. Um, so, and I think there'll be an opportunity for Pearl Jam folks to um, sign up and join me if they want to volunteer. So, um, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to do, and I'm trying to do more. So, um, it's. Uh, I'm glad I've got it on the books. I'm glad I'm. I'm doing it this year. Right on. You want to talk a bit about Arts Core and what's going on with that? Uh, I'm on the board of directors for Arts Core, and uh, Arts Core is an organization that um, basically funds um, arts classes for um, students that are um, that don't have it in their school districts for whatever reason. Um, and um, it's been an organization I've supported for about 20 years. It's going through some transitions. We have some a new leadership now, co-leadership model, and um, I'm very excited about it. I really, really am looking forward to um, this next phase of the organization. And um, and uh, these two uh, the two new leaders are are, are dynamic uh, women that are um, are going to take this organization in, in new directions. I'm excited about that. Very cool. All right. Well, we'd be remiss if we didn't get a little PJ update from you. I understand yeah. that you guys are heading back to the studio. There may be some shows in 2023 still to come. What, uh, if anything, can you reveal to us about what's happening this year? Well, we're just, you know, we're going to be working on some more music, you know, between now and the end of the year. And we're going to, you know, hopefully finish a record. That's the plan. Um, and uh, the little bits that I've heard so far um, mixed uh, is sounding good. I'm excited. Um, it's going to be a rock record. And, um, you know, we'll be back playing some shows. I don't know when we're playing exactly. I think those dates, there's some dates brewing, but I, I don't think they've been announced yet or, or talked about. So, um, but, but pretty soon, handful here. And then uh, I, I hope um, considerable more in uh, 2024. Right on. We got it. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay.